Hello students, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, let us study about the six cases of a convex lens. So basically when we place the object that is the candle in front of the convex lens, we are able to observe the images. So the image formation depends upon various positions of the object in front of the convex lens. So let us study the six cases with respect to the convex lens. Coming to the case one, let us take the position of the object at infinity. The position of the object is at infinity. So the position of the image is at the focus and the nature of the image will be real inverted and highly diminished highly diminished so for this case the position of the object is at infinity the position of image will be at the focus and the nature of the image is real inverted and highly diminished that is a very small image so let us draw the ray diagram for the case one so this is the convex lens and I am drawing the principal axis and marking the optical center and here I am marking f1 and 2f1 on one side of the lens and on the other side of the lens I am marking f2 and 2f2. So basically when we perform the experiment we are going to mark the focal length with respect to the focal length of the given lens by focusing a distant object and uh, just uh, obtaining the image and that is how we are going to measure the distance between the optic center and the focus. So that is how we are going to measure the focal length and the same focal length we are going to use here for marking it on the principal axis. So now I am drawing the incident rays and we have to follow the set of rules which we have studied earlier. In my previous videos I have explained about the set of rules to be followed while constructing the ray diagram. So if you haven't watched the video please watch it. I'll be sharing the link in the description below. Any incident ray which goes parallel to the principal axis, after refraction, it has to pass through the focus. Similarly, I'm showing another incident ray which, is, which goes parallel to the principal axis, after refraction, passes through the focus. So this is how I have drawn two incident and two refracted rays, which are coming from the source of light. So here the object is the candle as I told you before, a candle is placed in front of the lens and the incident rays from the candle fall onto the lens, get refracted and they are meeting at the focus. Basically I am showing with respect to only two incident rays, but actually there are infinite number of incident rays falling on the lens, which is not possible to represent in our diagram. So basically we are showing it only with the two incident rays which are going to meet at the focus. So that is how the case one is very clear. So whenever an object is placed at infinity, the image is formed at the focus. You can see here clearly the rays are meeting at the focus. The refracted rays meet at the focus where the image is formed and the nature of the image is real and inverted. So why is it real and inverted? Because the rays actually meet at the focus. As we have studied earlier, the convex lens is a converging lens and the rays actually converge at a point. So that is the reason a real and inverted image is formed and at the same time it is highly diminished. That is a very point image is formed in the first case. So thus we have studied about the first case as well as the ray diagram. So let us move on to the case number two. Case two. And let us consider the position of the object to be beyond 2f, beyond 2f1. So the image will be formed between f2 and 2f2. And the nature of the image would be real inverted and diminished so 
So let us draw a ray diagram for the same case. So this is the convex lens, principal axis and the optic center. The diagrams are very easy. But please make sure that you have to use a sharp pointed pencil and scale to draw the ray diagrams. F1 and 2 F1 I am marking here and F2 and 2 F2. So for the second case as I have written here the position of the object is beyond 2 F1. So I am just marking the position of the object here with respect to this arrow AB. Let us name it as AB. So AB is the object placed in front of the convex lens and it is beyond 2 F1 as you can see here. Now, we are going to draw the incident ray which is parallel to the principal axis and it will pass through the focus after refraction. Similarly, another incident ray which goes through the optic center, it goes undeviated without any refraction. So this is also one of the rule which we have earlier studied. So the incident ray which goes parallel to the principal axis passes through the focus and the incident ray which passes through the optic center goes undeviated without any refraction. And here we can see very clearly the refracted rays meet at a point. So let us mark the image over here. So this is the image formed A dash B dash is the image formed between F2 and 2F2. A dash B dash is the image formed between F2 and 2F2. Since the rays actually meet after refraction, so a real and inverted image is formed and at the same time it is diminished. In the first case we have seen that it was highly diminished but here in this case it is a little bit small so we can call it as a diminished image. So this is how in case 2, we can represent the ray diagram. So let us move on to the case 3. So in case 3, the position of the object would be at 2F2. The position of the object would be at 2F2, then the image will be formed at 2F1. Suppose if you take the position of object at 2F1, the image will be formed at 2F2, vice versa. So here let us take it as 2F1, so that the position of image will be at 2F2. So the nature of the image would be a real, inverted and same size. So for the third case, the image formation would be real inverted and same size as that of the object. So now I am drawing the convex lens, the principal axis and I am marking the optic center. At the same time I am marking F1 and F2. Yes, so I have marked F1, F2, 2F1 and 2F2. So for the third case, as we can observe here, the position of object is at 2F1. So let us mark the position of the object at 2F1, naming it as AB. Now let us draw the incident rays. The incident ray which goes parallel to the principal axis after refraction, it has to pass through the focus. Following the set of rules, we are constructing the ray diagram. Another incident ray, which passes through the optic center, goes undeviated without any refraction. So as we can see, the refracted rays meet at a point. 
so let us draw the image this is the point of intersection of the refracted rays so i am just drawing the image over here marking it as a dash b dash so here it is very clear in the third case the object is placed at 2f1 and the image is formed at 2f2 and the nature of the image is real and inverted so the reason is because the refracted rays converge at a particular point where the image is formed so since the refracted rays actually meet that is why a real and inverted image is formed and it is of the same size so for example if the candle flame is of this size the image also will be of the same size but it will be inverted image it will be almost a real and inverted this way so both the object and the image will be of the same size in the case 3 so i hope it is clear now let us move on to case 4 so in the case 4 the position of the object will be in between f1 and 2f1 in between f1 and 2f1 so the position of the image would be beyond 2f2 beyond 2f2 it would be a real inverted image but in the fourth case it will be a magnified image magnified image so let us see the ray diagram for the fourth case so this is the convex lens with the principal axis and optic center now i am marking f1 2f1 f2 and 2f2 so as i have written here in the fourth case of the convex lens the position of the object is in between f1 and 2f1 so let me mark the object ab in between f1 and 2f1 now let us start drawing the incident rays from the object any incident ray which goes parallel to the principal axis after refraction it has to pass through the focus and any incident ray which goes through the optic center it passes undeviated without any refraction so we are constructing the ray diagram very carefully following the given set of rules so similarly we are going to mark the arrow marks so showing the direction of the ray is very important while drawing the ray diagrams so as we can see both the refracted rays meet at a point so let us draw the image at that particular point and mark it as a dash b dash so a dash b dash is the real inverted and magnified image which is formed in case 4 so as we can observe the ray diagram of the case 4 convex lens the object is placed between f1 and 2f1 and the image is formed beyond 2f2 and the nature of the image is real inverted and magnified so uh, suppose if we have the candle flame of this size then you can observe the image to be magnified almost like this magnified and inverted so we have studied about case 4 now let us move on, move on to the case 5 
in the case 5 of the convex lens the position of the object would be at f1 at f1 so when the object is placed at the focus the image will be formed at infinity so the position of the image will be at infinity so what about the nature of the image in this particular case the image would be real inverted and highly magnified highly magnified image so now let us observe the ray diagram and let us see how to construct the ray diagram for case 5 now similarly i'm going to draw the convex lens with the principal axis and the optic center and then i am going to mark f1 to f1 f2 and to f2 yes so according to case 5 of the convex lens the position of the object is at f1 so the object is placed at the focus of the convex lens so ab is the object which is placed at the focus now let us follow the set of rules to construct the ray diagram any incident ray which goes parallel to the principal axis after refraction it has to pass through the focus coming to the next incident ray which passes through the optic center goes undeviated without any refraction so let us observe the refracted rays in this particular case the refracted rays are just going parallel so when extended beyond that beyond the plane of the paper when we extend somewhere they meet at infinity they meet at a very far away distance so we can call it at infinity so that is how the image is formed at infinity and the nature of the image is real inverted and highly magnified so if suppose the candle flame is of this size you can see on the white screen you can see a highly magnified image so almost it will be like this so this is the object and this is the image so the image is a highly magnified and real and inverted image so i hope uh, the case 5 is very clear now let us move on to case 6 that is the last case of a convex lens now in case 6 the position of the object would be between between o and f1 so that is the object is placed within the focal length of the given lens so between the optic center and the focus and the position of the image would be on the same side of the object and the nature of the image would be virtual virtual erect and magnified so let us observe the case 5 which is a special case where a virtual erect image is formed since in all the five cases we have observed there was a real and inverted image since it is a converging lens so definitely there would be a question how come a virtual image is formed in the case of a converging lens so let us see what happens in case 6 so i am drawing the convex lens with the principal axis and the optic center and now i am marking f1 to f1 and f2 and to f2 on the other side of the lens
So, according to this case of the convex lens, the object is placed between optical center and focus. So, I am drawing the object between optical center and F1. AB is the object. Now, let us draw the incident rays. Any incident ray which is parallel to the principal axis, after refraction it has to pass through the focus. So, that was the rule which we studied earlier. And any incident ray which passes through the optic center goes undeviated without any refraction. So, here we can see the rays of light get diverged. Although it is a convex lens, the rays of light that is the refracted rays are getting diverged away from each other. So, that is the reason a virtual and erect image will be formed. So, definitely there would be a thought. How is the virtual image formed? So, let us extend these refracted rays behind. So, when we extend the refracted rays with a dotted line this way. So, as you can see, when the rays are extended behind, they appear to meet at a point where the virtual and erect image is formed. So, now let us draw the image formation at this particular point. So, this is how. A dash B dash is the virtual image formed. So, here in case 6 of the convex lens, it is very clear that the object is placed between the optic center and focus. That means the candle is placed very close to the lens within the focal length. And here we can see the incident rays strike the lens and get refracted. So, they are getting diverged. Although it is a converging lens, but the rays diverge away from each other. Since the object is placed very close to the lens, it is placed within the focal length of the lens. So, that is the reason the rays of light diverge away from each other and when extended behind, they appear to meet behind the object on the same side of the lens. They appear to meet and A dash B dash is the image formed. So, the position of the image will be same side of the object. And the nature of the image is virtual, erect and magnified. As you can see here, it is a magnified image. Basically, the difference between the real and virtual image is that the real image can be obtained on the screen, whereas the virtual image cannot be obtained on the screen. So, that is how uh, the sixth case is a very special case where the virtual and erect image is formed in case of a convex lens. So, I hope all the six cases are clear to you all and uh, uh, I hope this video is uh, very useful to you all. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel and I will catch you in my upcoming videos. Thank you.